Hello, welcome back. So this is going to be, I think, a very short video. In this video, we'll look at how to do uh, two population tests on a variances. So we're going to be comparing two population variances. This, of course, is an F test. Now, when we use Microsoft Excel for this, you're going to see a lot of similarities to the two population test on means. The way we input the data is very similar. The output is very similar, but we will need to talk about maybe a couple of little differences in interpreting that output um, just to make sure we don't make some silly mistakes that I see far too often. So when we're looking at two populations, let me just point out again, let's just remind ourselves that the distinction between a lower tail test and an upper tail test becomes somewhat trivial. You might recall when we were looking at two population means, we had our null and alternative hypotheses. Here I have population one is hypothesized greater than population two, and the null is just the opposite. And we have two tail tests, but it doesn't matter for the purpose of this discussion. The other one tail test would be a lower tail test if the average of population one is less than population two. Now, what did we say when we were looking at two population means? Well, it depends on how we define our terms. If we're going to do an upper tail test or a two tail test, the correct test formulation is entirely dependent on which population we define as being population one, which is population two. For example, I could test, you know, are apples heavier than oranges or are oranges lighter than apples? One of those is an upper tail test. The other is a lower tail test dependent entirely on how we define our terms. The same is true for when we are looking at two population tests on variances. So now if I put in the proper notation here for a variance, I could set this up as an upper tail test. I could set this up as a lower tail test. Either one of these could be correct, depending on how you define your terms, okay? So this is, again, just one thing to consider when we've got two populations. It's the same issue that came up when we were looking at two population means. Okay, so let's jump into Excel. So I'm using exactly the same data set here as I used for the two population means video, if you watched that one. So here I just have sample one and sample two, no context, whatever the emphasis of these videos is, how do we get the results from Excel? We're not gonna focus on interpretation or context, okay? So I've got my two samples. I come into data analysis, F tests, two sample for variance. You'll see, of course, it's uh, alphabetically sorted. So F test is easy enough to find. And oh, let me just delete stuff here, what I was playing around with before. So I have a similar looking dialog box as we had for the test on two population means. I have variable one, variable two. This has to be consistent with the way in which you have formulated your test which is based on how you have defined your terms. So if you formulated your test in a particular way, you've got your, your, your terms are defined in a particular way, you have to make sure that this is consistent with your test formulation. So variable one, here I'll say, okay, here's population one or sample one is variable one. And here's sample two is my variable two. Now, like other exercises that we've done, the descriptive statistics, the various t-tests that we've done, we have to make sure that we select our labels and then tell Excel that we selected our labels. Otherwise, Excel will give us an error. If you do not include your labels here, do not click this box because then Excel picks up your first data point and believes that that is a label and it skews your results. So only tick this box here if you have in fact included your labels in your selection as I have done. 
alpha, this is your level of significance. This is going to be given to you in your assignment or in whatever problem it is that you're working on. Output range, here we go. Okay, so there it is. Quick, fast, easy, no problem um, at all. It's nice when Excel does all of the work for us. So first thing that I do is clean it up here, get everything down to two, three decimals if you want, Personally, three is a maximum, two is often enough. Now, for my students, I generally don't care about all of this. Probably in your assignment, you have already included some discussion on descriptive statistics. I don't need it again here. Different instructors might have different requirements. My students, I don't need to see this again. What I do need to see is here we have our test statistic. And here we have a probability. Now, we run into a similar dilemma here as we had when we were looking at two population means. Excel does not know what kind of test we are doing. It doesn't know if we're doing an upper tail test, lower tail test, or even a two tail test for that matter. And you'll see here, if you watch the video on two population means, you saw that when we did the t-test, Excel gave us a one-tailed probability and a two-tailed probability. That was always just twice the one-tailed probability. For the F-test, it only gives us a one-tailed probability. Now, you might recall for the two-population T-test that the one-tailed probability that Excel gave you depended on whether or not your test statistic was positive or negative. If, let's just jump back here, if you had in your t-test for on means, if you had a negative test statistic, the one-tailed probability that Excel would have given you is the lower tail value. If in that test on means, you had a positive test statistic, then the one-tailed probability that Excel would have given you is the upper tail. Now, whether or not this is your p-value depends on what test you're doing. If this is my test statistic, if I'm doing an upper tail test, then that's my p-value. But if I'm doing a lower tail test, then this region here, all of this, is my p-value. So I would need to adjust one minus that probability to get my p-value. Similarly over here, if I have a negative test statistic, if I'm doing a lower tail test, then the probability Excel gives me is the p-value. If I'm doing an upper tail test, well, then I need this area, etc. Okay, so we remember that hopefully from our discussion on two, um, two population means. Well, for the f-test, as you probably know, the f-distribution is asymmetric and non-negative all positive values. So there isn't a negative and a positive. So how do we know then what tail of the distribution this is coming from? Well, here the magic number is one. For the population test on means, the magic number was zero. If it was greater than zero, upper tail. If it was less than zero, lower tail. Here, if our test statistic is greater than one, it's going to be giving us an upper tail probability. So here I have a test statistic of 1.4 and a probability of 0.21. So in my F distribution, if this is what that F distribution looks like, I have a test statistic of 1.4 and it's telling me that this area here is 0.21. So again, if I am doing an upper tail test, then this value is my p-value. But that's only the case, if I can spell properly, that's only the case for an upper tail test. If I was doing a lower tail test, well then this would be my p-value, one minus 0.021. So my p-value here would be then 0 0.79, okay? Now, if I had defined my terms differently. Remember that F statistic is the ratio of the two sample variances. So here I've got a number greater than one because my sample variance for population one, the numerator is greater than the denominator. 
if I switched those terms, I did this on the test for means as well, remember? And all it did was change the sign on my test statistic. Here, what do we expect? Well, here I would expect that test statistic to be the reciprocal of the previous one. So here is 1.4. This is going to be the reciprocal of 1.4, which is 0.71. Let's just clean this up a little bit so we can see our numbers a little bit easier. Click, click, and so there's that test statistic. And there's that probability, which is exactly the same, 0.21 exactly the same because now this is giving me the lower tail probability this test statistic is now less than 1.71 so if I come back here let's just clean this up a bit so now I have a test statistic that is down here 0 0.71 and that corresponding lower tail probability is exactly the same, 0 0.21, okay? So again, that magic number in the F distribution is one. If your test statistic is greater than one, Excel gives you an upper tail probability. If it's less than one, it's going to give you a lower tail probability. Of course, if you're doing a two tail test, you know what you need to do. If you're doing a two-tailed test, you multiply that probability by two. My p-value would then be 0 .0, uh, 0.42. Okay, so that should be about it. We have our critical values here as well. I don't spend a lot of time discussing critical values. Those would be the critical values that correspond with the level of significance that you would have entered in here. So we had a level of significance here of 0.05. So this would be the upper tail critical value for 0.05. And this would be the lower tail critical value for 0.05. Okay, so that's it. That's all there is to doing a F test uh, for the equality or inequality of two population variances using Excel. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.